I've tested many different keyboards over the years, but this, oh man, this is the most unique keyboard I've ever tried. Oh no, 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 no. My brain is breaking right now. Wow. Yep, that's me. You may be wondering how I got myself in this situation, forcing myself to learn a crazy new keyboard layout. Well, let me take you back to the beginning. It all starts with one word, ergonomics. Wow! According to Google, ergonomics is the study of people's efficiency in their working environment. And one of the core ideas of ergonomics is that the more ergonomic your workplace is, the more productive you will be. And so a few weeks ago, I decided it was time to test this idea. I wanted to assemble a new desk setup that was as ergonomic as possible to see if these changes would in fact make me more comfortable and ultimately more productive. But along the way, I learned that not all ergonomic desk accessories are created equal. I'll also be adding some powerful new desk accessories to my setup thanks to the sponsor of today's video, Pluggable. But more on that a bit later. Right now, it's time to start assembling this new Ergo setup. This is a public service announcement from Work From Hype. We all love looking at crazy ergonomic desk gadgets, but it's important to remember that comfort begins with your desk and chair. An ergonomic office chair or a standing desk will make a much bigger impact on the ergonomics of your setup than some crazy keyboard. Maybe if this guy went outside more often, he wouldn't need this ergonomic gear. What a sad, sad man. This concludes our PSA. I began my quest for ergonomics with my favorite part of any desk setup, the keyboard. To put it simply, most keyboard layouts require us to flex our wrists into unnatural positions in order to type. And so an ergonomic keyboard tries to solve this problem by changing the shape of the keyboard into something that feels more natural to our wrists and hands. And though I am new to this world, I at least have some experience. This Akko Alice keyboard that I used last year in my old office. That keyboard featured what's called an Alice layout, where the keys are rotated inwards to better fit the natural resting position of our hands. And I really like this keyboard, but I soon realized the Alice layout is just the beginning. This is a split mechanic keyboard, and it's exactly that. A keyboard split down the middle so you can place each half of the keys in a more natural resting position for your hands. The keyboard I have in front of me, however, is a bit more unique. This is the TWS, or True Wireless Split Keyboard by KeyMonkey, and it was launched on Kickstarter last year, and I believe they are sold out, but that's okay. A ton of new split mechanical keyboards have hit the market, and there are more options out there than ever before. Also, when I unboxed my keyboard, I totally forgot it was not pre-built. So there's an OLED screen here, and then we have two rotating knobs, maybe for scrolling, zooming, that's... I'm interested to try that, but we need switches. Cream Black Pro V3 from Akko. Okay, moment of truth here. That was not good. Nice. Woo! Okay, even though I have shown off a ton of mechanical keyboards, I've not actually built one from scratch. That's kind of a confession. That sounds so crunchy, it makes me nervous. But we're gonna keep going. I don't like that sound. Did I just break that? The only thing left now are the keycaps. These are the Akko WOB building block uh, keycaps, the WOB. So I'm gonna cut to a montage and assemble this keyboard. But while I'm building, I need to tell you about another part of my setup that is in desperate need of an upgrade, my cable management situation. To connect all these monitors and speakers and desk gadgets, I've created a tangled web of USB cables and hubs. And anytime I need to change something, it's a huge pain. But that's where the pluggable triple 4K docking station comes in. This USB-C docking station can power up to three 4K displays at 60 Hertz. And it has all of the connections I need at my video editing desk, like gigabit speed ethernet, an SD card reader, and an audio interface. But the best part is is that I can connect my laptop or my Mac into this docking station with a single USB-C cable. No more messy USB hubs hanging off the side of my desk. And for more information on the pluggable triple 4K docking station, be sure to check the link below. With my custom split mechanical keyboard now complete, it was time to move on to the next item on my list, the mouse. An open secret of the computer peripheral world is that 99% of computer mice in the world aren't great for our wrists. For most people, the solution is simple. Just take breaks and walk away from your desk throughout the day and your wrists will generally be fine. But I'm not most people and I spend way too much time at this desk, so I began to research ergonomic mice. 
And from what I've gathered, the world of ergonomic mice is basically divided into two teams. First, there is Team Vertical. These are mice which have been rotated 90 degrees, which makes them feel much more ergonomic in your hands. Let's check this out before I start talking. Okay. This mouse is called the Lift by Logitech. And so the idea is this mouse more naturally fits in your hand on its side. It's, it's really actually not that different. I was expecting this to be very strange. I think it's because I've been using the MX series for so long. I'm already used to using my mouse at a slight angle. I wasn't expecting this to feel so comfortable. But yeah, I'm surprised how natural this feels. Like I said, I still need a test. Which brings us to the other side of the world of Ergo Mice. And yes, I'm talking about the all-powerful grandfather from the 1990s, the trackball. Unlike your average mouse, a trackball is stationary. It stays in one place on your desk, and instead of moving your wrist, you control your mouse cursor on the screen by rotating the ball. This is the Kensington Orbit Trackball, in case you were wondering. And yeah, this is going to be my very first time actually ever using a trackball. Wow, okay. So this should be interesting. Oh, I didn't know it would come out actually. Okay, so the sensors, yeah, I mean, that's interesting that you can see the sensor right there. The sensor just faces up instead of down. Wow, okay, whoa, that feels pretty nice. Yeah, I'm probably not gonna be very accurate, but uh, that feels very satisfying. You know, what ends up happening, you end up using your fingers for just about everything instead of your wrist. And your fingers are nimble and your wrist is slow. So I've assembled the keyboard and I've got my ergonomic mice, and now I'm going to spend the next month testing them. But before I do that, I wanted to see just how hard this was going to be. So I sat down at my desk to perform a typing test. For a comparison, I started with a standard keyboard, the Keychron Q2 Max. So I'm not sure if I'm a slow typist or if every mechanical keyboard reviewer on YouTube just has insanely fast fingers. Uh, but this is my baseline. Then I swapped in my ergonomic keyboard. It's funny, when I put this on the table, I just kind of put it in a normal spot for a keyboard, but I don't have to. Like maybe like right here? Okay, so these are my first impressions of typing on the split mechanical keyboard. Oh, oh no. Uh, my brain is breaking right now. It took me 30 seconds to write one sentence, okay. I'm absolutely struggling right now. Oh no, no, no. Yeah, it was brutal, but I wasn't done. I also need to test the mice. I need to see if these ergonomic designs will affect my accuracy. So this is my current daily driver mouse. This is the Logitech MX Master 3S. I guess I'll start here and see how accurate I am with my everyday mouse. Oh man, my DPI is so low right now. So it's a good time to mention that uh, this is not a gaming mouse. Okay, well, that was something. This is the Logitech Lift. This is a comfortable mouse. If this was slightly bigger, it might be the perfect mouse for my hands. As far as first impressions go, it's an impressive mouse. I, I feel immediately comfortable with this. I don't know, I might be able to do this. Here we go. Not bad, miss, miss. This was the first time I've ever used an ergonomic mouse before and the accuracy was not that far off from my regular mouse. So now it's time for the moment I've personally been waiting for, the track. So here we have the Kensington Orbit. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be using all of my fingers or just two of them or none of them. To the trackball fans of the world, I'm sorry. I, I get it now. I mean, this feels really satisfying and smooth in the hand. The question is, how bad will my accuracy be? Because it feels like I am going to be misclicking quite a bit. Okay, here we go. Oh, dude, this is... Got two. Oh, I'm so much slower. But what are we doing? I keep missing. Oh, this is getting rough. This is getting really rough. Okay, come on. Oh, yeah, that's not good. Okay, so for the trackball, my accuracy dropped to 55%. I'm half as accurate with the trackball as I am with a mouse. Okay, so this is going to be a bit harder than I thought, but there are some benefits of this ergonomic setup that I haven't told you about yet. This unusual ergonomic split keyboard has opened up a ton of space on my desk, and I've been experimenting with different devices and accessories to see which makes the best use of this new space on my desk. One of the more promising use cases of this layout is with my iPad. The iPad fits perfectly between the split keyboard, and now I have a touch surface directly in front of me at my desk. 
I can go from typing on the split keyboard to sketching on the iPad seamlessly. And the reason why this setup works so well is because the iPad stays locked in place thanks to the magnetic stand by Pluggable. This tablet stand is incredibly sturdy and made of solid aluminum, which means it will never slide around on my desk. And the iPad sits securely in place thanks to embedded magnets and anti-slip silicone. That's crazy. The stand also supports both vertical and horizontal layouts. And for more information on the pluggable magnetic tablet stand, be sure to check the link below. Another interesting layout I tried was with this mini monitor. I picked this little screen up for a completely different project, but I soon realized this little screen was perfect for controlling music or playlists, and it filled the space between the split keyboard in a very satisfying way. So it's been a month since I began using this ergonomic layout and I have some thoughts. First, the keyboard. It turns out that typing at this angle is actually quite comfortable, especially on my wrists. It wasn't until I switched to this keyboard that I realized just how much I'm twisting my wrists when I type at a standard keyboard. But I must shamefully admit that I was unable to fully adapt to this keyboard. A month is just not enough time to unlearn a lifetime of typing habits from a standard keyboard layout. I just couldn't type fast enough with this keyboard. But I don't think my issues came from the fact that this is a split keyboard, I think most of my issues came from the fact that this is a split compact keyboard. Not only were my hands in a new position, but I was missing several keys that I'm very used to. Maybe if I tried a full-size split keyboard, I would have had more success, but this combination of a split plus compact layout was just too much for me to adapt to. As for the mouse, well, for me, the clear winner was the vertical mouse. Maybe it's because I'm already used to the MX Master series, but making the switch to a vertical mouse was surprisingly easy, and I felt comfortable with this mouse almost instantly. As for the trackball, well, it went better than expected. But much like the split keyboard, a month is just not enough time to unlearn everything I know about a mouse and make the switch to a trackball. So can a more ergonomic desk layout make you more productive? Absolutely. The more comfortable your wrists and hands are, the longer you will be able to type, and the more work you will get done. But adjusting to a fully ergonomic setup takes way longer than I expected. And as for my setup, well, I may actually go back to the Alice layout I mentioned earlier in the video. It really did feel like the best of both worlds. And if you want to see which keyboard I try next and follow along with the evolution of this desk setup, be sure to subscribe. As always, my name is Nick Moe. Thank you so much for watching Work From Hype, and I will catch you guys in the next one.